say hi, Sponks? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I have another sewing project for you. This one is from the 1940s pattern. I have actually made this pattern before. However, this was, I think, the second dress I made, or maybe the third, and I really screwed it up and hated it. So I'm excited for the opportunity to try making it again because I've definitely learned a lot since the last time I made it. And I always think it's cool to work on stuff that, like, you've grown on because like I've grown so much in the probably two years since I first made this dress that making it again is really exciting. The description for this dress is shaped panels front and back emphasize smooth slim lines of a long waisted body finished with a simple round neckline in style one meets the gathered skirt below the natural waistline band trimmed and inserted from the pockets trim in the skirt in style two the small round collar is fastened with a facing the waistline is belted and no pockets trim the skirt choosing long sleeves gathered to a wristband or short sleeves gathered at the shoulders i will be doing a long sleeve because they're flowy it's winter i felt like this was a good winter project and literally the fabrics kind of fall but i think it also goes into winter last time i made this dress i tried doing the like no slide fastener so no zipper way will not be doing that again and i will also be moving the zipper from the side to the back like i do on all of my projects so there will be a few alterations on this pattern i also need to go dig up that dress and try it on and make sure i like how it fits before i embark on this journey but let's talk fabric. This is the fabric I'm using. It's this really lovely rayon with like kind of leaves on them. I think it's really cute. I'm really excited about this dress. I'm planning on doing the little, it's a tie up. It's like a lace tie up in the front. You guys know if you watch my Gunny Sacks videos, I absolutely love those tie ups in the front. So I will definitely be doing that. I have some, I think like mustard colored, I forget the name of the type of cord that I will use for that. That will be perfect. I'm excited. So let's just go ahead and hop into the cutting. It will probably be a bit challenging because this is a slicker fabric, but I feel much more prepared to tackle it. So let's hop to it. All right, I have my first round of pieces laid out. There's not a ton of differences that I'm making between this and the pattern. However, I am cutting it with an extra half inch for French seams where I'm going to want French seams and then I am also cutting the back on a edge instead of a fold because I need the back to have a zipper. I am not interested in a side zipper which is how I made this dress before. I definitely want a back zipper and now that I feel confident in altering patterns to have back zippers I'm never going back to a side zipper but other than that like I said this is pretty straightforward and I think the other thing that's really interesting about this is I've really really grown and I feel like I can tell the most when I cut slicker fabrics like these. Fabrics like these used to be my nightmare, but now, not that they're as easy as a cotton, they just certainly aren't as hard as they used to feel. I mean, to be fair, I have also cut silk chiffon now, and so a rayon doesn't seem half bad. Good morning. It is about 10.15. I'm getting ready to dive into this project. I'm hoping it's fairly easy because I have made it before, even though it was quite quite a long time ago. I've been getting pretty excited because I can just tell from my pre-planning how different, or I guess how much better of a seamstress I am, and I think that's really cool. I have everything cut to be French seams. Uh, everything should be really finished and beautiful on the inside, and I'm pretty excited about that. I think this will be a one day project. I do have an event I need to be at at 3.30 today, so that's the only thing that might turn this into a two day project, but it's pretty straightforward and really should be quite easy. So yeah, I like I said, I'm pretty excited. I think this dress is gonna be really cute and very like, while it's a vintage pattern from the 1940s, I think it's gonna look really modern and fun. So I'm really excited about that. And I think it's like a really nice, more muted option for me, I guess you could say. I wear obviously a lot of colors and a lot of like really bold pieces. And I think this piece will be like the perfect mix of like me, but a little bit more simplified. But yeah, we're just gonna pretty much hop to it. I don't really have any concerns today. Just wanna kind of get in the sewing mode and crank this out. Let's just go ahead and hop to it. All right, so we are getting started by basically assembling the front and back panel separately. For the front panel, I am putting on inner facing on this facing. So this is gonna be where the deep V, and well, it's not really that deep, but the V goes. And I'm just ironing that inner facing on by putting a towel down that I use as a press cloth so that way I don't get glue all over my iron like I have definitely done before. And then I am just ironing that down. I'm following the inner facing direction. This is interfacing 
interfacing from, I think, Fashion Sewing Supply. I like their interfacing better than any others that I've used. So that is what I'm using here. I do not usually press the edge folded over. However, I'm doing it here just because of how slick the rayon is. I think I'll get a better edge if I pre-iron it and then top stitch it down, which is what I am doing right here. And at this point, I was eager to get the whole zipper done. So I went ahead and started working on the back panel, even though I didn't finish the front panel by any means. So here I am working on basically a French seam zipper combo. I haven't necessarily ever read how to do these, but I've kind of guessed that basically Basically, you do your normal French seam and then you kind of split it in a way that's easy to put a zipper in. I don't really totally know how to explain what I'm doing here, but basically I am cutting all of the stitches that I put in for where the zipper will go. This is like a 24 inch zipper or something wild like that because I figured I would use a longer one for my stash since this one goes so high up on the neck. And then once I have those seams ripped out, I am then actually oppositely folding in where the French seam was. And then I'll just do top top stitching around that so that way it will be a nice clean seam for when the zipper goes in and it won't have any weird frayed edges as rayon tends to. And then here I am just basically bending this backward for that next seam, which will be the final French seam that enclose all the seams at the bottom and then also has where the actual zipper will go on this side. For where the zipper will actually go, I am sewing with four millimeter inch stitches that will be easier to tear out. And then I am switching over to two and a half millimeter stitches, which will be over the French seam because obviously I don't want that to rip very easily. And um, the other one, I'm obviously ripping all the stitches out. And then I am again, pressing everything, always pressing hardly ever at the sewing machine. I feel like, especially on this piece or anytime you do French seams. So here you can see I'm doing the bottom. And then after I have the French seam pressed to one side, I am them looking at the zipper seam. So this one I am actually pressing from the top because I need this edge to be really, really nice and crisp for the zipper. And then what I am going to do here is I am going to put in some interfacing tape to stiffen this for the zipper. This is just important because rayon's really slick and I always find I do a better zipper if I put in this interfacing tape. But before I do the interfacing tape, I am going to go ahead and rip open the seam because it's way harder to rip the seam after you've put in the interfacing tape cheap. And now I'm just seaming in the zipper. This will have a be like a one-sided placket. Technically, you're supposed to use these for side zips, but I like to use these for zippers in general because it's the only way I can neatly install a zipper. If I do like a 50-50 zipper, it never turns out well, is always kind of crooked and odd looking. And so this is the method I have found works for me. I am of course using a zipper foot here. I also think I put off doing the front because this is where I really messed up the dress that I made a long time ago, is I definitely messed up the way this front seam works. I know I'm a better seamstress now, but that doesn't mean I don't get intimidated. So here I am finally actually pinning that piece in and I have drawn a V for clarity for where exactly the slit is going to go. And then I am sewing this here. I did mess up a little bit and I got the last like six stitches at the bottom of the V a little bit too close together. I'm not going to be able to cut those. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that later because basically if I cut the V as deep as I need for a clean turn, I will then be stitches. Instead of unpicking the whole thing like I probably should have, I made it a bigger problem for me later. And then here I am putting in the gathering lines for the side ruched gathered hip panel things. You will see what I'm talking about when I get further into assembly. It's a very abstract concept right now, but I am putting in my usual three rows of gathering stitches here. This and the sleeves are the main places the gathering's focused, so you're actually going to see a little bit less gathering than usual on this project. I took a quick break for lunch here and then spooky is settling in my lap before I went ahead and I gathered the panels. I usually don't do this on the couch, but there were four different panels I was gathering to each other before I needed to sew them. I felt like it would take a little bit of time and I like to sometimes just sit on the couch for a little bit of a break. But basically here I'm taking these bigger rectangle pat panels and then gathering them down to these smaller shaped pat panels that are going to really add that emphasized waist into the pattern. Here I've already stitched this and I am now taking out the gathering stitches. I do this basically by the side that I gathered on, grabbing one end and pulling it all the way out. Places where I can't get it to just pull all the way out nicely like that, I do have to use my seam ripper. But because these are such short gathered panels, I didn't really have to use my seam ripper much, which was nice. And then I don't like to French seam gathers because I'm scared if we're honest. So here I've cut little pieces of bias from my leftover fabric 
and I'm using that bias tape to bind these seams. So again, these are the four seams on the various points of the waist. I just want to make sure, again, these are really neat and rayon frays so badly, and I want this dress to last a long time. And then once that's done, I am top stitching that seam line down facing upwards. There's a lot of top stitching on this pattern. They don't actually instruct you to do it here, but I thought it would look nicer here if I did and add less like weird bulk around the hips and it was an easy enough step to do. And then here I am going ahead and I am pinning the back panels together. So there's three of these panels on the back, a gathered panel, the zipper panel, and then another gathered panel. I am pinning these wrong sides together because I'm going to French seam them. And then after doing the first seam here, I am cutting that down for their French seam so they're less bulky. And then I will be ironing this, flipping it over, and then sewing them, of course, right sides together for an even, clean finish. I did cut through my main fabric uh, while trimming these seams, which I'm not particularly pleased about, but I did figure out how to fix. It's okay. It's just definitely not ideal, and I'll have to be more careful next time I do this. And we are now sewing that final enclosed French seam here. And then this is where the pattern tells you to top stitch. You're basically top stitching those French seams down that they're pressed in kind of the way you would a dart, I suppose. I mean, you don't top stitch a dart either. This is where the top stitching is in the pattern that is explicitly written and why I decided to also do it on the hips is just because if it's already existing here, I may as well do it there as well. Good morning. So we are a few days later. I am slowly working on this dress. I do think it could have been a one day project if I hadn't had an event to get to that day. However, of course I did and it was a very fun event and I got some new plants including a friendship plant which I've always wanted. So I'm excited about that but I have these guys. So I have the front half and the back half of the dress essentially done. I guess I'm showing you the wrong side. Yep it's looking cute. I think this dress pattern is so cool because I think it actually looks looks really modern, especially with such a modern fabric. And then I'm really proud of all of my really, really clean seaming and things like that. This dress is gonna be beautiful and I'm very excited about it. But yeah, so today I think I can wrap this up. I just have to make the sleeves, put the sleeves on, make the collar, put the collar on. That's it. Oh, and so the back and the front together, but that's gonna take me like 10 minutes. So yeah, very excited. Are you gonna come say hi, Sponks? Yeah. Do you say hi to all your fans? Yeah, they like you more than they like me. Yeah. Spooky says hi. But yeah, so I'm excited about that. I do have a few other things I need to get done today on top of the sewing. So finger, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you in the face. So fingers crossed I can finish it. And then I wanted to share what I've been listening to for this project. I've been listening to Consumed by Aja Barber. She is a environmental activist, specifically in the like clothing and fast fashion space. And I've been meaning to get around to reading her book and the audiobook was perfect. The audiobook's been very enjoyable. I am very much prefer audiobook books that are like read by the people who wrote them. I just think it's so much better. She's reading what she wrote. I've learned so much. I already know a lot about fast fashion and the exploitation of garment workers and stuff like that. I've learned even more from this book. Like I would consider myself pretty knowledgeable and high level on this subject. So it was spooky. It was good to listen. To <laughs> She's looking at me like what? So it's been really good and right now I'm in the chapters of like what you can do and how to break and change habits. So yeah, I, I've been listening to that for this project and I just want to share that with you guys. I would actually rank this as one of the best and most important books I've ever listened to. With that, let's just go ahead and jump into the sewing. All right, so I am sewing down the side seams and the shoulder seams here. First starting with the side seams, these are the long, long side seams. Again, we are French seaming these guys, which is why you see the right sides out right now. And then I will eventually put them right sides together and you'll see the wrong side. And then today we are going to start on the collar. So here I am attaching the fusible interfacing to the collars again here. Also, in case it's helpful, I will link this interfacing. I think this is the Elegance Shear, like the ultralight shear. I would have actually gone with, they have like a medium shear, but I left it at my parents' house on accident, so I have to get that back. So this was what I had, but I would have gone just a smidge stiffer. Because I finally need to actually cut this thing I've been afraid to cut the whole time, which is the neckline, I lived in fear of this moment. I did it. It was okay. I definitely did a better job this time than I did a couple years ago. I did cut through those very bottom stitches on the V, so then I did take this to the machine and I just reinforced it by going back and forth at the very tip 
a couple of times. I did that after I ironed it, so I actually did it with a top stitch because I felt like it was the best choice here. Again, if I had done a better job about turning the V before I was in this struggle, that would have been ideal. And then after I tackled that scary thing, I am actually sewing together the two pieces of the collar. And then I am clipping all of those seams and turning it inside out with a very nice press. And then Spooky came to cause me problems while I pinned this. I know I shouldn't let her on my iron board, but she's just so darn cute. Here I am pinning the collar pieces to this as well as some bias tape that I cut and arranging all the facings the way they're supposed to go so I can finish them neatly after this. And then I am sewing what is the scariest part for me. First, just sewing them normally with a seam allowance and then I'm going to my ironing board pressing it before going back and under stitching it. So that way hopefully the collar pieces will lay nicely. And then with everything pressed, I am just wrapping up my day with doing some hand sewing of that facing, just tacking it down. I also didn't do this in the old version of this Dress, and it definitely works better if you do even though it does show a little bit at the surface it's better than the whole facing flipping out and now it is the next morning excuse my very gross and cruddy bathrobe here I am sticking in the eyelets I've marked these and I am just using my machine to put in an eyelet I am going around the circle twice so doing the exact same stitches twice just because I don't think once is enough for it an eyelet I'm comfortable poking an owl through and like having it be a hole in the fabric. I like a double reinforcement for this. And then here's me poking these holes with said awl. This one is good for if you need something more ergonomic. I do have this linked in my list of sewing favorites. And then here I am doing my first turn up for the hem. I'm actually going to do the second part of the hem by hand, but I want the clean edge to work with first. And then I'm going with a half inch for the hem itself. I actually think I should have basted this hem. I underestimated how curved it was, but I figured that out when I was in way too deep. So I didn't fix that, but that's why you see some of these creases. And I really do think a the hem lays better when I use my gathering method, but this worked and did the trick. And now I am focused on the sleeves. There is nothing too wild here. I am just stitching down the, the cuff. So I've folded up one edge by a half inch, left the other one long that I'm gonna sew the eventual thing to. And then I just have to go down the side seams on these because they're meant to be folded in half. And then to finish up my sleeve prep, I am putting in the gathering stitches around the head of the sleeve as well as at the base of the sleeve where it will tuck into the cuff. So I of course French seamed these sleeves to sew them together. And then I, similar to the zipper, have this little bit of an opening that I need to basically repress to get it in the shaping basically that I need to with the clean edge. If I were to do this in the future, I would actually do it by hand, but the instructions had you machine stitching it. I think it would have looked better if I had machine stitched closer to the edge, but because of how I did these, the turn was wider and I wanted to make sure to get to the full edge of it so it wouldn't be flapping around and being weird on the inside. And then here I am gathering the sleeve end to fit into the cuff. And again, I'm just removing all these gathering stitches. Now I am easing the sleeve into the sleeve top head thing. So these are interesting in that it's really overall meant to be a pretty eased sleeve with only just a bit of gathers up at the very top of the sleeve. And then I have sewn in that sleeve head and then I'm going back through again with the bias tape that I cut to do some seam binding that matches the fabric perfectly. This fabric is really soft so I don't want to ruin it with any other type of binding tape that is not just the fabric itself. And now I'm just down to the hand stitching. I am hand stitching those cuffs in as well as the hem. And then the cuffs actually recommend a snap closure, but because I drafted these myself, it would not make a snap closure work. So instead I did a button and then I made like a button loop coming out of the other side of the cuff. So I had more flexibility in space. And then the very last step was to lace up the front and we are ready for the reveal.
All right, you have seen the reveal. I hope you enjoyed it. It is very cold and snowy here in Seattle right now. I am not here for it. I saw a TikTok that said, I don't pay Seattle rent for Midwest weather. And I thought that was really funny because yeah, we don't do snow here. I used to make fun of snow before I moved here. Like the fact the city shuts down if there's like an inch or two. But now that I live here, I get it. There's no infrastructure to plow the roads with pretty much. And where I live, it's really, really hilly. And like watching those cars go down those hills is wild. Look up, I think it's like Queen Anne car jam or something like that. If you want an idea what that looks like, it is wild. <laughs> Back to the project at hand. I have wrapped this. I'm pretty excited about it. I actually even got out the old dress that I made of the same pattern to kind of compare construction and how much I've learned. First, before we do that, we're gonna jump into the cost analysis or the cost breakdown of this. I have my trusty spreadsheet. So we're gonna go through that right now. The fabric was $68. I don't know what the tax was on it. I bought it in... Pennsylvania quite a while ago, but I do know that Fabric Mart generally sells their rounds for about $17 a yard. So I went off of that estimation because that's where it's from. I went to Fabric Mart in Pennsylvania. I do have that video. I will put it in the eye. Just know that I was a very new YouTuber and the footage in the video is not my best work. So with that disclaimer, it's in the eye or the eye. I never remember. Honestly, I felt like $68 was pretty good for this because it's pretty high quality. And then Notions 1043, this is for the zipper, the thread and the interfacing and the and the buttons. This had a good amount of notions, I guess. And then the pattern was actually double this, but because I've used this pattern twice, it goes down in like cost per use. So it was $10.95. This brings us to supply total of $89.38. I think that is a great supply total for this. I'm quite pleased with that actually, because this is a really high quality dress that I'm really excited about. It fits me really well. It makes me feel really good and it's super comfy. I think that is a great price for it and it is similar to what you might pay at Zara maybe? I have, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been shopping in a really long time because I make most of my clothes. But it, it feels like it it's around what I remember wall prices being for way lower quality garments. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then the labor hours, this took me two hours to cut and about 10 and a half hours to sew, bringing us to a total of 12 hours and 30 minutes. So for the labor cost breakdown, this is a reminder that I multiply it by 25, which is the wage of a seamstress in Seattle. I was looking at the living wage in Seattle. They say the living wage in Seattle is $21 an hour. I have lived off of $25 an hour in Seattle and I can tell you that is not a living wage. You are scrimping. No, it's not a living wage here. Unless you have like three roommates in one bedroom and I don't consider that a living wage. <laughs> so I need to do more research to figure out that adjustment. So until then, I'm gonna figure go with 25 because I think somebody with the skills of a seamstress should should be able to make a middle-class living. So I need to do more research on what that actually means in Seattle. Cause yeah, $25 an hour is not a living wage. Again, I have lived that wage. I have lived that wage actually four years ago. That was the wage I was living on. If that was not livable then and rent and everything with inflation is so much higher now. So I call BS on $21 being a livable wage in Seattle. And that brings us to labor total of $312.50. Again, I do this because I want us to start thinking more critically about who's making our clothes. All our clothes are made by humans. There are not robots that can really replicate making clothes. I just want us to think about if we're purchasing a dress for $20, like how much is actually going back to the seamstress? Cause the answer is like cents. It's incredibly hard labor. I do it on this channel for fun, but like I can't imagine doing it as a job. I think my body would just fall apart. So that brings us to a grand total of $401.88. Honestly, I think this is a nice enough piece because it should endure washing really well. The fabric's really high quality. That I actually think that's a fairly good cost if you were to buy a higher end or ethically produced dress like this. The labor would be cheaper in an ethically produced dress because obviously those are production sewers and they sew differently than I do. That is the total for this. Now let's talk about the dress itself. So I actually do have the first dress I made. Actually, funnily enough, I'm wearing fabric that I made this dress out of, that I made a blouse out of recently. I didn't plan that. So on this one, let's talk about some construction issues. I didn't tack any of the facings down. None of the seams are finished. I pinked them, which is a wild choice for a loosely woven rayon like this. Everything's kind of a little bit transparent. Actually, I think I did pretty good on the cuffs on these. I actually will say I like the cuffs on these better. I went a little bit off script and I made my own cuffs because I couldn't find the cuff piece. And then of course I found the cuff piece after I'd cut everything. These cuffs are much more comfy. You'll maybe notice in the reveal that the cuffs on my current one is a little tight. This one, the hem is kind of janky, but if we're honest, the hem is kind of janky on my current one too. I think really the difference in these two is the French seams and the seam binding and all the tricks I've learned with interfacing. I skipped interfacing on this one because it was so sheer. It felt like it would be like 
not great interface. I know this just looks like a black blob to you. And I do think that is what made the difference on making the neckline look not so great. But let's talk about the actual star of the show. I adore this dress. Usually I try to wear it once in the office. Because of the snow, I haven't been in the office for a while and I did really want to get this filming done. So I have not worn this in the office. However, I have worn it to lounge on the couch and it was pretty comfy. Like, would I choose to lounge on the couch on this normally? No, probably not. I am really a like yoga pants and sweatshirt couch lounger. I am not a dress, but it was comfortable enough. I was ready to take it off by like five or 6 p.m. But I think in an office, this would be a really comfy dress where I'm not, you know, trying to like lounge on the couch and watch Netflix. I think this turned absolutely gorgeous. I love this pattern is just really gorgeous in the way it kind of goes in on the waist without going in too tightly and then really carves out on the hips. I think this is a really ideal pattern for me. And I do, I think this is absolutely absolutely stunning. I added a, the collar. I didn't have the collar on the other one. I really like the collar add. I actually think I will probably plan to make maybe a more bright and fun collared version of this dress. This is fairly muted for me. I know it's quite a pattern for a lot of people, but for me, this is really muted, which I do enjoy. Actually, I think this would be like a good dress for when I'm out and trying to like blend in just a little bit better. I actually think this is an ideal dress for that. The zipper, I'm pretty proud of the zipper because rayon is not an easy fabric and it's not like too bubbly or weird. I will say the biggest flaw I made in this dress, I might have to get up to really show this to you well. While I was cutting my French seams near the zipper, I cut through the fabric so then I had to patch and darn it, which hopefully you can see here, but I had to darn it real quick with the machine. I have two spots of that. I have one here and then one down here. They're both at like kind of close-ish to the waist. I would say they're a little bit below the waist, more at the hip. So that was a bit of a bummer. However, I fixed it and it wasn't a huge deal. It didn't add a ton of time. And in the future, I'll remember to be way careful. <laughs> it's so funny. I did it on one side and I was like, you can't do this again on the second side. And then of course, what do I do? I do it on the second side on accident, even though I was trying really carefully not to. I also think that is partially due to the slipperiness of the rayon. Everything, let me turn this one inside out because I'm so proud of it. You can't really see how sloppy the seams are on that one, but the seams in here are gorgeous. Everything's finished. So these are this, the places where I did the seam binding over the gathering because I don't like doing French seams with gathering. I have French seams here. Again, seam binding around the armhole like it's beautiful inside. This is a dress that's gonna wash really, really well and have a very, very, very long life. Like I said, uh, the hem is a little wonky. Like if I see this on a hanger, there's a part of the hem that like clearly dips lower than the rest. But when I wear it, I don't notice it. So I don't care, I guess. And I guess the other thing that I did more neatly, neatly is you can see I've tacked the facing down. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just really proud of this. And um, the collar would have been something I was too scared to attempt a few years ago with that dress. I'll also link the video with the original dress where I hopefully have tried it on in it. Again, early in my YouTube career, early in my sewing career, I think this was probably like my fifth or sixth dress somewhere in there, but I will link that in case you're curious how far I've come, but you will have to get through a little bit of cringe. I'm really proud of this. It's really cute and it makes me feel really good as well. And that's always a perk in a dress. I feel really pretty. Like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this out of, I don't know if I own it. I actually, so I'm not a huge rayon person. Like I don't sew with rayon often because it's kind of fiddly and annoying, but I do think I would like to order some really, really colorful and fun rayon to make this dress in. I just don't think this dress would like be the same in cotton because I think the rayon is what really lends to that curve because rayon just kind of like, sticks to you. <laughs> I've been just so proud of my sewing lately and how I feel like I finally entered the point in my journey where I love everything I make and I can see it fitting into my wardrobe long term. I think some of that is also figuring out more of my personal style and what I like. So I can't wait to see what else I'll make this year. I mean, full disclaimer, it's December right now, but this will come out in January. And so I'm really excited about what's ahead for this year because I've already made two makes for this year and both of them are some of my work I'm proudest of. So we're not even into next year. I can't imagine what else is gonna come out. So definitely subscribe and stick around. I would love to have you. And then as always, you can give me a tip over on Ko-fi if you so desire. It just helps fuel my channel, buy supplies, feed Spooky, pay her vet bills. She's due for a yearly appointment or whatever. So I always really appreciate that. And then as always, there are the free ways to support me such as liking this video or commenting down below. And I will see you next time, bye.